Welcome to Womanhood, where women come to be activated and welcomed into a community where they can center themselves and be led by the desires of their heart so that they can come alive. My name is Naima Singletary. I'm the founder of the Academy for Womanhood, where we help women grow up and become unapologetic and design their lives according to their true desires. So today I'm, um, I have a special guest today. So I'm broadcasting here on TikTok, obviously, and then I'm broadcasting here on Facebook as well. And as an, as a, an announcement, starting next Monday, I will no longer be live streaming on Facebook. I will be live streaming on YouTube. More about that to come. Today's topic with my special guest is the hard truth of centering yourself. The hard truth of centering yourself as a woman who's truly living a life led by true desire. Not mere wants, but real desires, okay? And so I'm going to set the stage for how this guest came to be a guest today. So you guys have some context for how she even got here today. Sandra, thank you so much. So um, the God Power Workshop is a workshop that I had scheduled. And then also on my TikTok bio there, people can contact the company to let us know how we can help them. And so Sandra registered for the workshop. We decided it wasn't a good fit for her. And then she had also entered her information through my TikTok. And so what happened was Sandra and I spoke on Sunday. That's the first time I've ever met Sandra. Sandra and I do not have any history. So that's the first time I had Sandra and I talked on Sunday when we decided the God Power Workshop was not a good fit for her. Then yesterday I was following up with leads because people can put their information in on my TikTok page, contacting the company, letting us know what they want help with. So when I was following up with my leads, Sandra was one of the leads because she had entered her information in both places. Now when I called Sandra yesterday, I didn't realize it was the same Sandra that I had already talked to on Sunday. So we get on the phone and I'm telling her, you know, I'm reading to her what she wrote because the form lets you fill in why you're contacting the company. So I'm reading to her saying, hey, you contacted us, blah, blah, blah. She's like, yeah, we spoke. I'm like, wait a minute, you're the Sandra from Sunday? She's like, yeah. And we're like, oh my goodness, I didn't even realize. And I said, yeah, we have multiple things going on, not just the workshop. And um, we started talking about the woman community, which you guys have heard about and you will continue to hear about. And I'm talking to her about the woman community and she's like, you know, I, I just, I don't know what I, I got to like center myself. I got, you know, I just had a breakdown this morning and da, da, da. So naturally I'm like, so what happened? And then, so she explains to me what happened. And this is how the conversation of centering yourself came about. The hard truth of centering yourself as a woman, no matter your age, because Sandra is a grandmother. Okay. So no matter your age that you are centering yourself, there are some hard truths that you need to face. And before I officially have Sandra begin sharing her story, I'd like to frame this further by reiterating what I have said many, many times is that there is a price to pay to live the life of your dreams. There is a price to pay to live an extraordinary life. And frankly, there is a price to pay even to live an extraordinary even to live a mediocre life there is a price to pay you may have heard on the internet pick a hard which one is it going to be is it going to be the misery or that chronic dissatisfaction of living a comfortable nice peaceful life but you know you're not living the life of your dreams you know there's so much more to you but there's so much more to you and living your calm, peaceful, quiet little life do not coexist. And that while there will be moments of peace and harmony and love and calm and solitude, when you are truly living an extraordinary life, particularly as a woman with a God-given vision, man or woman with a God-given vision, and you are sincere about bringing that thing to the world in whatever way you're going to do it, whether you're going to be public facing or not. There are going to be hard truths to tell, hard decisions to make that Sandra is getting ready to share with us, and I'm so thankful for that. And that is something that you need to remember that there is no like, let me try to find an easier way, a back door, a shortcut, 
you're going to break down the same way Sandra broke down, the way so many women broke, break down, the way I have broken down. And it is part of your rite of passage of becoming a woman who is truly being led by your true desires. So without further ado, thank you so much, Sandra, for being here. And first of all, tell us what it was like for you just getting here today and your experience with video. <laughs> oh, let's see. Um... Complete chaos. Uh, I had a breakdown again right before um, I reached out to you, as you know, and I said, hey, I'm super nervous about, you know, sharing my story. But, you know, after speaking with you, thank you so much. Um, you really helped me to understand how my story is important to a lot of women. Mm -hmm. And having to make those hard choices and choosing yourself is not easy. Mm -hmm. Um so with that being said, yesterday morning, um, I woke up and I was feeling really good. I had been having trouble sleeping. So I felt really good because I slept well the night before and it was peaceful and quiet. And I said, I wish I could do this every day. You know, um, I wish I had the space to do this every day. And I can't because I help with my grandchildren um they're dropped off here in the mornings i get them ready for school i drop them off these are my son's children and <clears throat> immediately something came over me it's like my spirit said you know what you have to do and i was like no <laughs> they need me i can't do that they need me this is me i'm having a whole conversation with myself in my bedroom and i'm like no they need me i can't and I immediately start to weep. I'm just boo-hoo crying, boo-hoo crying, because I know that this is something that I have to do because it's time for me to start putting myself first. Thank you. Pause. Um, that was a good pause. Okay. Now, uh, maybe about, what, two weeks or so ago, I did a live stream from Atlanta saying that true obedience is hard. True obedience is difficult. True obedience is embarrassing. And she, Sandra just told you very clearly that her grandchildren, right? And that's a different kind of love. You know, I watch my mother loving my grand, uh, my niece, and that's a different kind of love. My mom has said being a grandmother, it's like your heart gets bigger than you ever knew it could get. Like you loved your kids, but with your grandkids, it's bigger, okay? Yes. So here you have a grandmother who her ch grandchildren gets dropped off to her. She gets them ready in the morning. It's that grandmother's love at her grandchildren. And spirit, her spirit voice, whatever her relationship is, because we all have our own conversations with our own spirit and guiding hands, right? Said to her, you know what you got to do. And immediately, Sandra said her response was, I can't do that. They need me. I can't do that. They need me. How many of you have gotten instruction to do something and to do it would cut away. And I want Sandra to talk more about the feeling of that. Would cut away at whatever feeling you get inside of your current reality that you don't want to break. She don't want to have to tell her grandson no, her, her, her daughter-in-law no, tell the grandkids no. That's difficult. This is one of the difficult decisions, one of many that all of us are required to make on our path of true obedience, which is difficult. And we are sincere about living extraordinary lives, about being true to ourselves, about making sure we keep our resentment out of our bodies, out of our minds, so we don't have anger building up, blaming other people because we refuse to make that choice when spirit told us, you know what you got to do. Because that's what a lot of women are running around here, blaming men, blaming other people, when actually, baby girl, you got word seven years. You was told not to even marry old boy. But you made a decision because I don't want to look single. I don't want to be alone because I, I, what's my value if I'm not a widow man? And now look at you, seven years later, mad at him and really mad at yourself because you weren't obedient. How many of you? Okay, so I just want to highlight that true obedience when you're living a life of desire, centering yourself so that you can be the grandmother that's truly happy. So you can be the wife, the mom, the woman who's truly happy. It is difficult. So Sandra, continue your story, please. 
Okay. Um, and so, you know, after I cried a bit and, and struggled with it, that same voice said, after I said, you know, they need me, that voice said, you need you. And I knew I had to do it. And so I picked up the phone. I texted my son and my daughter-in-law. And I simply said, hey, um, I'm not going to be able to help with the kids anymore. This is something that I have to do. Um, I'm sorry. And I wish you the best. And from there, it was just a whole day of being stripped to the bare bones. Mm. Um, as you know, when I spoke to you <laughs> later on in the day, I was still going through it, you know. You were in tears. At that point, once I was obedient, um, it was like God started to show me glimpses of the pain and the things that I had been going through. I almost felt as if he needed me to accept that challenge put myself first so that he could start to do the work. Um, yesterday was probably one of the hardest days of my life. Mm. Um, mm. Tell us about that. What was what was hard about it? Um, at one point, I, I like to sit outside, you know. At one point, I was sitting on the porch drinking coffee, and I started to come feel like I was losing control. Um, and my heart started to race and, um, I have some rocking chairs on my porch. So I was sitting in one of the rocking chairs and I literally had to rock myself like a baby mm. and rub on my leg and, and talk to myself mm -hmm. to come back, come back. It's okay. Um, the things that are happening need to happen. Um, because like I said, he had been revealing things to me, glimpses of my life and choices that I had made when clearly I heard, you know, the voice to say, don't do that. That's not good. All right. And I still went in that direction. So more recently. I want you, you to know, elaborate I, right there. More recently, pause. We're going to pick up right there with more recently. Okay. So in the past... Am I hearing you admit that you've been disobedient? Very. Okay, how so? There were some things in a relationship that I was in recently where there were many red flags, and my intuition was telling me, you know, I noticed right away, um, but I kept making excuses for it. Okay, what else? What else? How, how far back can you remember about how long you've been disobedient and the ways that you've been disobedient. And are you able to see today how that disobedience has led to the life up until you made this most obedient decision? Can you see, and not just you t tell us, right? Cause you may or you may have not, how, how different your life would have looked if over the last, let's say 10 years, you would have been obedient everywhere you were disobedient and why you were disobedient in the past? Um, yeah. The last 10 years, I've been on this search for love, right? Who doesn't want to be loved? And I would, I've been in relationships that clearly my intuition was telling me that it was a no-go. Mm -hmm. um, and each time that I, I, I was disobedient, it set me back, mm -hmm. right? Because I was always in these relationships, relationships looking for some type of approval, um, people pleasing, and each time I lost myself. Mm -hmm. And I, I walked away each time picking up the pieces. And I would say I can remember as far back as Ooh, my early 20s mm -hmm. and I'm 40 I'll be 50 this year so mm -hmm. um it's been a very long time and I'm just happy to be in this place yes and I'm happy that this time I actually listened this time you actually listened thank you so much Sandra for sharing because you I I told you 
when we were on the phone, Sandra and I spoke on the phone about an hour ago and I said, you know, you're not the only woman going through this, right? Like I said, this is one of the primary purposes why I even invited you to go live because I want people to see that this is a thing and for your story to free people. And so when we go back to when you were 20 or whatever age you were that you can remember where you were disobedient to intuitive hits relating to anything, whether it was relationships or whatnot, who, what kind of woman were you? Who were you at that time? Do you remember your feeling state? Do you remember how you saw yourself at that time? Yes. Um, I would say I was a very meek, um, like I said before, always trying to please others, um, downplaying who I really was, um, so that others didn't feel intimidated by me. Mm -hmm. I've always gone kind of been in relationships, both romantic and platonic relationships where, um, people always seem to feel threatened. Mm -hmm. And so I started to believe that I was the problem. And so when I would get in these relationships, I would just kind of fold right okay. into this little shell uh, and put myself in a box so that people wouldn't feel intimidated. People would like me. Um, I could feel accepted and it did nothing for me, but bring me to this point. Now, I'm thankful for all of that because I know deep down that some of those things needed to happen, and I accept that. And so I'm at a place now of acceptance and actually willing to move forward Yes, in mm -hmm. a positive, happy way. Yeah. Yes, I love it. Okay, so in the obvious way of... Um, you basically turned on yourself in order to be in these relationships because as you said, you felt like you were the problem. You, when you needing to sh fold, right? Like I must be the problem, so let me fold, right? Do you recall the, um, the way you would be with men so that you wouldn't but be intimidated or seem like you were I will, I'll let you explain it, right? So that you can use your own language. But do you recall being in relationships with men and how you would be with men so that you could exist there? Mm -hmm. um, yes. I was making myself available. Um, whatever it was that they wanted, I would do my, do my best to provide it. Um, not really embodying the things that I like. So whatever relationship... You know, at that time, say, for instance, a simple thing like going out to eat and they we would always eat things that they like to eat. You know, mm -hmm. and I would go, oh, yeah, I'm fine. Um, I'll, I'll do that if that's what you want. You know, not really wanting, uh, you know, that particular food. But I'm like, yeah, OK, just to make them happy. Mm -hmm. I was always in this space of trying to make other people happy and in the process i was miserable exactly mm -hmm. yeah so i'm i'm asking sandra these questions more deeply because i want those of you here and those who will listen to the replay to see yourselves in her story because this is what women are doing worldwide and sandra have you ever been married yes yes and how was that when did you marry and when did you divorce and how was that now that is a story for another life. <laughs> <laughs> My God! You see? Yeah. See? So, so yeah, it's been about 15 years, 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's that's a story. See? So I'm, I'm asking this because I, I really want women to understand the different ways that this playing small and shrinking ourselves and ultimately lying and betraying ourselves, we always end up paying for it later in life. You will eventually pay for it, okay? And so, um, <sighs> where do I wanna go now? We had left off with, so now, remember I said, let's park this. We were there, so now, now you are being obedient. Would you say this is the first time 
that you have been obedient? Yes, to this degree, yes. To, to this degree. When you say to this degree, what do you mean? So there's been times in the past, you know, I would take heed to certain things. Um, and I'm not going to really go into detail. Um, but in terms of the severity of this last incident, um, it was pretty bad. Mm -hmm. And it almost forced me, you know, to have to be obedient mm -hmm. at this point. Mm -hmm. um, because, I, like I said, I was completely losing control. Um, although I personally felt like I had everything under control. Mm -hmm. So yesterday was a wake up call to me that I still had a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> though I thought I had it together and all that people pleasing and shrinking myself really small. Um, yeah, I, I was in total denial and he showed me that. <laughs> He showed me. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when you so, say he, who are you referring to? God. Okay. The most high. Mm -hmm. The divine mm -hmm. who holds all the power. Mm -hmm. When I tell you, he totally dismantled me mm -hmm. and to a point where I was mm -hmm. bare. And once he got done with his revelations, he said, now get up and activate. And so <laughs> it's been like, uh, okay, you know, mm -hmm. I had to go through the tears. I had to cry. I had to accept those hard truths that everything that I was shown has been the truth. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I have, I, I have never put myself first, you know, from with my children, my family, even my friends. Um, it's like anytime someone needed something. Um, I was always there, right? I'm, I'm the type of person that I like to fix other people's problems. People pleaser. And so there was a point in my life, maybe about, maybe about 10 years ago, where I fell into this really dark place. And all I could do was go to work, come home, go to work, come home. Not realizing that I was in this really depressive state. Um. And so I mentioned that because during that time, you know, nobody that I had been putting myself on the back burner even noticed and <laughs> that I was in this deep place, um, barely could go to work. And I'm almost ashamed to say, but I want to be very transparent. There were times where I would literally get out of bed that morning, pick up a pair of pants off the floor put them on and go to work. Mm. And all of these people, relations, romantic relationships, friendships, even family didn't even notice that I was losing myself. Um, and that was one of the times that my spirit spoke to me and said, it's time to move. Um, and in terms of employment, because my job and that was personal stuff. And one day I was at work and I heard the voice clear as day and it said, it's time. It's mm -hmm. time for you to move. Mm -hmm. And so I was obedient and I started putting in applications and, and looking for other employment um, to try to free myself from that phase of my life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, though I was successful, I still had those same tendencies of people pleasing and, mm -hmm. and doing all those other things. So, yeah. <laughs> I know it's a lot. <laughs> this is, so there was something you touched on. Nobody noticed. Yes or no, I want you to answer this question, is this true or false, that at that time, while you were getting up, sometimes you just pick the pants up off the floor and go to work, were you also good at faking like everything was okay? Like you smile, you act like everything is fine? Yes. Very good at it. Very good at it. Mm -hmm. The reason why I'm asking you, Sandra, is because that's what so many of us do. We're, we're smiling. Hi. 
cooking, taking care of people. And because we're not in intimate relationships, we, we're having sex, but we're not in intimate relationships. We're having dinner with people and hanging out, but we're not in intimate relationships. Intimacy is that I see you. Intimacy is that I feel what you feel. Intimacy is I can feel into you. You can feel into me. So when you're not well, I can feel it. I can sense it. That's intimacy. Like Ian Levanzant has said, into me you see. Intimacy. Into me you see. So you're surrounded by friends, family. I don't know if you were married at the time. And nobody can see that you are losing yourself. And you you are doing such a good job of faking it and you're so lacking in actual intimacy with the people in your life that nobody notices. You see? And so I want women to, to hear what this looks like that one, when you are faking it so much, the people in your life, your mom, your friends, whatnot, if they're not hyper intuitive people or have that empathic ability that's activated in a strong way and they are you're in that kind of relationship with them people will totally not see that you're you're sick you're in front of them sick and they won't even notice and so thank you for sharing that that's why i asked you that question so people can really see that we can hide we can be hiding in plain sight the way you were so good, thank you for sharing that. So now here you are today, right? To this degree, I love that you made that distinction. I was obedient to this degree and explain what to this degree means to you. <laughs> um, if I could be just honest. Yeah, of course. Basically half the ass, right? You know, picking and choosing the things that I wanted to be obedient to. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Go ahead. And not just totally surrendering and saying, you know, here it is. Take take this portion from me, right? <laughs> and lead the way. Mm -hmm. So, and I've had a lot of that throughout my life. I've had a lot of that, just picking and choosing what I want to be obedient to. Um, and as a result, you know, the most high allowed me to find out mm -hmm. <laughs> what, what I like to call F-A-F-O. He allowed me to F-A-F-O. <laughs> what is that? Oh, fuck around and find out. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I'm happy to be in this place. You know, it feels really good now. Um, to actually say that I could see the light. Yes. And I could see what I was doing wrong. Yes. And I feel good about actually putting my foot down and saying, it's me. It's my time. Yes. Yes. It's going to happen one way or the other. I feel like the story that you have not told, but you've uh, inferred here about um, basically uh, the most high humbled your ass. Yeah. And uh, I spoke maybe about a week or so ago about how you keep getting instructions on things to do as you were, and you were cherry picking. Well, I'll be obedient about this one because I don't have to risk too much. Mm -hmm. I'll do this one because this one feels safe. This I like this one. And then feel like you're doing something, want to get loud and proud and about obedience. Yeah. When you know you ain't really done the real thing that's going to risk it all. Because true obedience means you gonna, you get instructions to do shit that are going to require you to risk everything. Your job, your stability, your relationship. Your Listen, have you gotten to, the most high told you to do something that was going to risk everything and you disobeyed? Yes or no? Yes. Many, many times. All of us. That's why I say, I know what obedience look like. You're going to look like a fool when you're being really, it's going to look like you destroying everything that's good in your life. When you truly obedient, that's what it's going to look like. It's going to look like you destroying everything good. It's going to look like you making a horrible mistake. I remember when I was in my marriage, 
girl, I was in the perfect marriage. I mean, I, you know the way they say you're supposed to do it according to the system of things? I was doing it the way you were supposed to do it. I mean, like, the whole everything. And I left it. Even the woman he got with after me was like, couldn't understand why I would even leave something like that. It's like that. When you're truly being obedient, you fuck up to most people who look at it. It looks like you're fucking up a very good thing. But that's between you and the hands that guide you. Just like that's between you and the most high. And so now you got beat the hell down at 49 years old, right? When, and we, we're very grateful, obviously, for that now. And how different would your life look like if you would have been at the risk-taking level of obedience at 22 years old? Oh, wow. Uh, I can't even imagine. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, this is my point. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 yeah. yeah, you see. So yeah. this is true. So how so many melanin dominant folks are so angry about how the earth looks, how planet looks, how we constantly are we at the bottom and all this and all of that. You are, a, you Sandra, are a microcosm of what so many of us have done for, let's just say the last 20 years, Right. Because when you never you start going back to slavery, people love to feel like, well, people was going to lose their life. Well, when you're being obedient, you risk your fucking life. Okay? Right. Harriet Tubman risked hers many times right. to save lives. So what's the difference between you and her? Courage. A decision. Right. Okay? So it's like, well, because I'm going to lose this. Yeah, that's how obedience works. Well, then I'm, I, I invested all this and I built this up and I might lose it all. Yeah, that's what obedience looks like. And so... When you are a melanin dominant person who's called the way you and I are called, the way you've been called for years, Sandra, and have ignored it, and you disobey, you're hurting humanity. That's how large and how weighty your decisions are. Yep. You're hurting all of humanity when you don't obey. When you disobey, you put yourself on a track where you and I can no longer link because you made a decision somewhere in disobedience. So just imagine... Let's just use the 144,000 literally. That means if you take even half of 144,000 who are being disobedient, that means the other half that are being obedient, we're going to not link because you're making decisions that's putting you on another track. Yes. That's the gravity of who we are and our impact in this life. Yes. Yes. And I got goosebumps. So yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. So here you are today, and look at how, when you made that decision with your grandson, how I happened to call you for a second time and didn't even know that that was you I was calling. You see that? Yes. You start putting yourself into obedience, you start hooking up with the right ones. You see? And now Sandra gonna keep on making decisions from a place of risk-taking obedience. That's the new expression right there. Because obedience is play. Because y'all doing little little cherry-picking obedience thinking you're doing something. Nah, it's risk-taking obedience now, brother, sister. It's risk-taking obedience. That's where we going now. Otherwise, we can't talk. How about that? So, Sandra, what would you like to say in closing? A few things. Um, and I actually wrote them down. Good. Ooh. To understand Ooh. that this is serious, and we're at a place now where we have to make those hard decisions. And the longer you wait, the further behind you're gonna be. You have to make those decisions. And the first one is listen to that inner voice. That is you. It's telling you what you need to know. Don't put it aside. Listen to it. Allow God to take you to that quiet place and watch the magic begin. And lastly, he wants to take you to that lowly place. Once you're obedient, he wants to take you to that lowly place so that he can build you back up and say, now activate. So if you didn't take anything else out of my story, I would say 
what and piggyback on what Naima just said. You know, when we make those decisions to not listen to that voice, we are holding back a whole group of people that need to be activated. So if nothing else, you know, do it for everyone else around you, right? <laughs> Allow them that opportunity to be able to activate. And, you know, I, I'm sincerely sorry and feel bad to those who, you know, potentially had to wait on activation because of my cherry picking, you know. Um, but anywho, that's what I want to leave you with. And thank you so much for allowing me to share my story. And I really hope this helps somebody. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being here. I asked Sandra yesterday immediately. I said, you want to go live? Should she said, yep. Without hesitation. And I told her, I said, if you, I text her, I said, if you get nervous, call me. And then we got on the phone. I said, you can back out if you want to back out. And at first she was like, yes, I want to back out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then we got it together. And I wasn't going to push it. I, listen, let that flow. Let that thing flow. I just said what I said. Boom. I backed up off of it. She was like, okay, so how many minutes? <laughs> how long is it? proud of you Sandra I am so proud of you I'm so proud of everybody who's coming up behind you I'm so proud of us as a people this elevates my spirit today I feel lightened I feel joyful abundant thank you so 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 much this is so good and so I want to invite those of you who are ready to activate as well into the womanhood initiation. Sandra, you most definitely need to be there Thursday, 12 p.m. Pacific. So this is an initiation into your womanhood. That's what Thursday's womanhood initiation is all about. It's all about us gathering on Zoom together. We're going to see and hear each other. And we're going to go through a process of discussing fears of looking at how the unconscious mind is impacting our behavior, sort of like this whole cherry picking that Sandra talked about a bit here today, and really getting you ready and into a decision of if you're going to come into the womanhood community to take your activation and make it real manifest in the world so you can bring your true desires to life. So if you're ready to come alive and really be living in your true desire, being and your risk-taking obedience, as Sandra has talked about here today, sign up for the Womanhood Initiation. It's happening this Thursday at 12 p.m. No, is it? No, at 10 a.m. It's happening Wednesday, Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific. You can register right now with the link in my bio. And on Facebook, the link to register is with this video. I'd like to remind you that starting next Monday, I will no longer be live streaming on Facebook. I will be live streaming uh, on YouTube instead. And there's so much more to come. Sandra, again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you to our viewers. And remember, I am here live streaming for woman, uh, every, no, womanhood. This is my show now. It's called Womanhood, Monday through Thursday at 12 p.m. Pacific. So I will see you back here on TikTok and Facebook tomorrow at 12 p.m. Pacific. Thank you so much. Hi. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. <laughs> so good. So good. Uh, uh, so good. Uh,